Recall Archimedes' principle from a previous screencast, which states, Any body completely or partially submerged in a fluid is buoyed up by a force equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the body. There's a difference between submerged and partially submerged, like the difference between floating at the surface of water and swimming beneath the surface. In either case, the buoyant force you experienced equals the weight of water you displace. A submarine is a watercraft that is equipped to either float or operate while submerged in water. So here's a question. In which case is buoyant force greater on a submarine? When it floats or when it's submerged? What do you think? In which condition, floating or being submerged, does the submarine displace more water? A common misconception is that buoyant force is greater when floating and less when submerged. Recall the two blocks of wood from our previous screencast. The part of the block displacing water is shown by the red crosshatch. And we see that the block of wood displaces more water when it's held beneath the surface. Buoyant force there is greater because all of its volume displaces water, whereas when floating at the surface, only part of its volume displaces water. Both blocks are at rest and in equilibrium. Back to our submarine. So what holds it beneath the surface in equilibrium? The answer is increased weight. How? A submarine has interior ballast tanks that can take in water greatly increasing its weight. Isn't that yum? A submarine with its ballast tanks filled with water is appreciably heavier than one with empty ballast tanks. If it takes in even more water, its weight further increases and it descends. To ascend, say to the surface, it employs compressed air that blows water out of the ballast tanks. The submarine becomes lighter and buoyant force, now greater than weight, pushes it to the surface. Whether in equilibrium at the surface or beneath the surface, the net force on the submarine is zero. In both cases, the buoyant force equals the weight of the submarine, less when floating and greater when submerged. This can be confusing to people who don't take into account that a submerged submarine is heavier than the same submarine when floating. In summary, a submarine dives by opening its ballast tanks to take in water. To surface, it empties water by squeezing it out with compressed air. This idea of squeezing air brings up another problem common in physics classes, the weighted balloon. Here we see a common party balloon filled with air pulled into water by a heavy weight tied to its bottom. I show the balloon just barely floating. By just barely, I mean that if I increased its weight the slightest bit, maybe by adding the weight of a coin or two, it would sink. It's on the verge of sinking, barely floating as shown. Now here's the question, which is a stumper for many students. If I gently push the balloon beneath the water surface, say half an arm's length, then let go, what will happen to the balloon? Will it float back to the surface? Will it stay where it is? Will it sink? We assume deeper water here than indicated. And most important, can you defend your answer? I'll tell you what. I'll give you my answer and explanation in the next screencast, More on Buoyancy. I'll just leave you with one hint. Squeezed air. So until then, I want to return to the submarine and leave you with this concluding question. Suppose a submarine is submerged at a particular depth in a body of seawater of constant density from the surface to the ocean floor. How would the buoyant force on the submarine compare if it were at rest appreciably deeper? More, less, or the same? Defend your answer. Until next time, good energy. Mm -hmm.